So now with my camera reset, I can show you how to cut an outside bevel freehand, but with the aid of a visual guide. So in this case, and we haven't really talked about this much, my cutting surface has a visual guide on it. It has a set of grid lines that I know are one inch apart. It doesn't really matter what their interval is right now. The important thing is that they're very, very straight. So what I have right here is one of the outside of the four outside corners. There's the second, the third, and the fourth on my developed cube pattern. And what I want to do is cut a 45 degree angle, which in this case is going to be, it's going to start at the table right here, and it's going to end at this line right here. And in order to do that, I'm going to use my visual guide of the line on the table of my cutting surface, as well as the line that we drew to, to uh, define that bevel. And I'm going to be able to cut a nice, clean, accurate bevel without much problem. Now, this is tricky to do with the camera in the way, so excuse me if I bump it a bunch of times. But the basic strategy here is, and I'm going to move it as close to the camera as I can to show you, is to use the guideline on the table to guide the point, the very, very tip of your knife, right? So that, that sharp little point way out there on the end. And what's going to happen is I'm not going to compromise my knife position, and I'm going to put the point of that knife way out here and it's out way off the end of my piece. However, I have my piece on the guideline, so I know that the edge of my piece and the point of my knife are actually on the same line. And then I'm going to line up the leading edge of the knife, this part of the knife right here, with my guideline on the sheet. And I'm going to very, very carefully, and with my finger in the way because it has to be so that I can do this on camera, uh, I'm going to drag my knife at the proper angle with the tip visible here and the leading edge there. And that's about as far as I can go without banging into the camera, so I'm going to move it up here like this to finish it. But again, the tip of my knife is going to follow the visual guide on the table and the leading edge of my knife is going to follow the line that I drew for the bevel. And this is really, really awkward hand position, so this is not the best bevel I've ever cut. The important thing is that I'm demonstrating how to draw and follow the visual guides. So now you can see, except for where I missed right here because my camera's in the way, I've cut that bevel nice and straight. I'm going to do one off camera so that I'm not in a, such an awkward position and then I can show you what a clean one looks like. So this is the opposite side. Now keep in mind that as you do this, this is really awkward hand position and I'm cutting towards myself like you normally do with an X-Acto knife, but I'm also cutting in fairly prox close proximity to my hand. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting very, very slow. I need this to be accurate anyway. And I'm sort of using my left hand, my fingers here and here as the pressure that's keeping my piece from moving around. And the goal here is to not cut yourself, but it's also to have an accurate cut. So you have to have good downward pressure with one hand while you cut with the other. And when you get close to your knife, just pick your finger up and move it to the other side. And there you have a nice clean bevel. Now we have to repeat this process on all four outside bevels. And I'm going to do that right now and then we'll skip ahead and we'll start cutting the inside bevels as well. Now the foam core material is fairly forgiving because the foam itself can be compressed. So the really important thing here is that you maintain your edge, that you maintain that outside edge and that you don't compromise it because that's going to be the visible part. If your inside of your bevel is off by a tiny little bit, there's some things that we can do to correct it later. But the main thing is that you want to make sure that those outside edges stay nice and pristine just like you originally cut them. And with a truly sharp knife, and before I started doing this part, I changed my blade to a brand new one, uh, you can shave this material very, very, very thin. But the knives dull as you cut through it, so keep in mind that as you move through a piece, you might either need to sharpen your, your blade with a whetstone, or you might need to change it altogether. So I've got my four outside bevels cut. 
and I have to do some inside bevels that are still on the outside edge of the sheet. So like in this case where a corner comes together, I need to be able to cut that bevel, but I need to be able to go all the way through to the opposite side. So following that line, I'm going to have to cut through my center line here. Before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and score that center line so that I can do that bevel in one long stroke. And so what I'm going to do to score the center line is pull out my trusty straight edge again, like this. I'm going to line it up on my center line. And I'm just going to score, which means I'm going to take several swipes, never cutting all the way through. And the way I know I'm not cutting all the way through is that I'm not actually putting much downward pressure on the knife, and I'm just sort of letting the knife go through the softest material, which in this case is the foam. We'll see how well that score worked in a little bit. Now that we have our four outside bevels cut here, 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 it's time to cut our inside bevels, some of which are on the outside edges, like in this inside corner here, and some of which carry through and have to be two-sided bevels here and here. So what we're going to do first is we're going to score our center lines so that we know that we can cut those bevels nice and clean and all the way through because this bevel up here, this one here, has to be the same as this bevel down here for the whole thing to line up. And there's a bevel right in the middle here that carries through, and we want to make sure that each one of those is exactly the same. So I'm going to lay my ruler on a center line like this, and I'm just going to score it, which means I don't want to cut through the entire piece of material. I just want to cut through the top layer, the layer of foam, and not the bottom layer that's on the table. So I'm going to score that one. You can also verify that they're scored by looking really close at the edge like this and seeing that that's nice and all the way through. Now we might have to score that a little bit further later, but I'd like to be able to do that when we can see what we're doing, and that's not going to happen until we cut those inside bevels. So now that we have all of our pieces scored, we're in a really good spot to be able to uh, cut these final bevels and fold up our box and see how we did in terms of accuracy and precision. So the strategy is the same. I have this, this major guideline right here lined up with the inside edge of my piece right here. Move my hand so you can see what I'm talking about. And I'm going to put the tip of my knife out here on the line, the visual line on the board, and I'm going to put the leading edge of the knife on my bevel. And this one's actually easier than the last one because this bevel already being cut, I can see quite a bit of what's going on where my blade is. So I'm going to put it there, and I'm going to put the knife there, and I'm going to start cutting that bevel. And really the best favor you can do yourself as you get into this kind of model making is to practice a lot and to make a lot of cuts because the faster and the smoother and the more fluid you make your cuts, the better you will be at it in the long run and the cleaner the cuts will be every time you do one. So because this is scored, that little piece fell away, which is great, and that means that I can cut an inside bevel uh, for the first time. Now again, this is like a scoring operation because I don't want to cut all the way through to the other side, so what I have to do is get my knife tip lined up, and then I'm kind of working blind from here on in because I can't see my guideline on the board. So I'm just going to be very careful to not move the angle of my wrist as I drag my knife through the material. And then again, when I get to the end here, because I've already scored it, this piece should basically fall away. And because I'm being careful, I might have to do that a couple of times just to make sure I get all the way through. And I should be able to just flick that out of there with my knife and see that I have a nice clean inside bevel cut. For some reason, it might be my original score. There it goes. It wasn't quite loose. Okay. So now I have a nice, clean inside bevel cut, and I can continue on out to here and finish this bevel as well. Same technique. I'm following my guideline on the table, which hasn't moved, except for right there, and I'm following my guideline that I drew for the inside of the bevel.
and it should fall away clean. Now I can finish that inside bevel here by turning my piece around, lining it up nice and square with the guide line. And this time I can see my knife blade or the tip of my knife and I just want to make sure that I'm right in that center of that channel. And what I am left with here is that I can see inside my channel, I can see that it's folding really well and I can see that when I fold it up I'm really really close to perpendicular. So that's an inside bevel. Finally we want to do that with all of the remaining inside bevels on this piece and make sure that each and every one of those is exactly the same as this one because that's what's going to make our box come together really clean and square.